time to musk up. Wow. All right, back again. Finally, I'm doing this video. I should have done it on September 1st, but I've been busy. So nonetheless, better late than ever. So today I'm going to do top 10 city exclusives. And because obviously in the month of September, the city exclusives is available worldwide to everyone. You don't have to be in that specific city to purchase the fragrance. The marketing, honestly, from the Lavo is probably one of the best, personally. Although these fragrances aren't better in quality than the regular line, they still charge an extra $200, over $200 for these fragrances because, well, you can't buy them unless you're in that specific city. I've even asked, they will not ship it to you. So if you call Miami Boutique, they won't ship it to you in New York here or wherever else that you call from. But regardless, uh, even though there is no scarcity here, it's still kind of cool considering that the fragrance that's made for that city is only, you can only purchase it in that city. I don't know, there's something cool about that. Although personally, I don't think they're overly complex really. Although I do think they smell good. I don't think they're worth the price. There's some here that I do think are kind of like, I feel like somebody should just go for a couple of them rather than what I did because I have nine bottles here. One of them uh, that I have on the list, I do like, but I don't have a bottle of, and uh, I would actually swap it out for one of the bottles that I do own, and I'll go into that. So let's begin. So I have number 10. So I'm putting number 10 on the list. Number nine is the one that I don't own, and I would probably switch it out for number nine if they gave me the opportunity to uh, change the fragrance that I purchased and that is aldehyde 44 I, I I really did enjoy this at first, but I ended up going to a restaurant the Middle Eastern restaurant in Queens And I used the bathroom. I washed my hands and the soap that they had in there smelled exactly like this and it, This is over 500 and that soap probably cost like three bucks And so I don't know in my head it kind of turns me off I don't know, but regardless, it smells very nice. It's almost a modern day kind of Chanel number no. five. The mother would wear Chanel number no. five, the original, and the daughter would wear something like this. Now, I do find this to be a little bit feminine leaning, kind of uh, the other one that I think that is feminine leaning. Unfortunately, it's the one that's uh, made for New York and it's a tuberose fragrance. It was nice, a fresh tuberose, but it wasn't for me personally, but this one is just nice, sparkling, bubbly aldehydes, soapy, clean. There's some other uh, floral notes in here, very musky. I'm going to be saying that a lot because a lot of these fragrances have the the same thing going on. As I always say, Le Labo has this, this mixture in the base that they always use. I call it the Labo Aid, and that is a mixture of Isoe Super, sorry for the ambulance, Isoe Super and Broxin and Musk. Um, they change them around sometimes. Sometimes they use more ISOE Super, sometimes they use more in Broxin, sometimes more Musk. But in this case, I would say there's more uh, Musks here, white Musks. Uh, they're all kind of very fluffy, these fragrances. A little sweet, floral, uh, definitely some aromatic notes that I pick up here. But uh, very, very nice, personally, in my opinion. But if I had the chance, I would go back and not purchase this and purchase Mer 55 which is number nine on the list you know uh, I didn't say the best things about it but regardless it did smell nice right and I do think uh, I would enjoy wearing it more on a daily uh, on the daily in the whatever <laughs> than aldehyde 44 personally and again, I just did a review on it or first impression, and it was basically this fresh jasmine fragrance with some undertones of like this clean, earthy patchouli, spicy patchouli with some slight resinous touches of myrrh, but mainly the thing that I got is uh, ambroxan and musk. So number nine on the list, I have this one. This is a fragrance for this note in particular I do think is quite unique and this was made by uh, Alberto Marias and this is Vinny 44 a very mainstream kind of 
mass appealing vanilla it's really really nice again very fluffy almost cotton soft cotton ball soft isoe a lot of isoe super so a very woody vanilla but at the top you get this nice hit of orange so this uh kind of like this orange popsicle with a vanilla center almost right and a bunch of cedar wood and that's what i get and definitely some spices maybe some cinnamon here Definitely get some spices in the uh, in the base. But very, very nice. And as far as longevity and stuff like that, these fragrances last a very, very long time because there's so much fixatives in the base here that th there's really no issue when it comes to that. Next up on the list is something that I, I would say is very, very interesting for what it is. And it's they, they say the marketing for it is kind of like this modern day, new aged, uh, cheaper fragrance and it, that's really what it smells like like a modern day cheaper almost like a fragrance a cheaper made for 2050 whatever but this does really smell futuristic really weird metallic uh, very kind of salty almost uh, very grainy this fragrance green mossy but not a typical moss that you would smell in like a vintage fragrance i don't know it's like a clean moss definitely a lot of synthetics in here i think one of them is clear wood i think it's like this uh, synthetic patchouli with all the good parts of patchouli taken out the chocolatey resinous uh, parts of patchouli taken out and you kind of get this uh, woodiness in a way and i definitely get that here and once again musky probably some isoe soup or maybe some an uh, ambroxan as well very nice really really strong like this stuff uh, i literally will only spray like two times personally all right so moves the sheen so now we're really getting into some of my favorites here and this is a moscow exclusive and that is ben join 19 i don't know if i said this is number six and so this is a really really nice cozy amber fragrance leaning on the note of benzoin with amber you need three notes to make the accord benzoin vanilla and labdanum and here they're leaning more on the benzoin kind of in the realm of something like vanilla but more resinous smoky uh incense dry than vanilla i definitely i would say get some labdanum in here as well because it does come off a little leathery but spicy, but not as spicy as the other fragrance that's on this list that's very similar to this in my opinion, but I do enjoy more. But, uh, and again, very woody. I get some Gayak wood here. Again, very kind of this flaky wood. The way I like to explain Gayak wood is basically it smells like wood chips that you would put into a hamster cage. But a clean hamster cage, right? You just got your hamster, you got the cage, and you the first thing you put in is those wood chips, right? So, uh, so no animalic touches here, nothing dirty or anything like that. Just a nice, cozy, uh, fluffy amber fragrance. Benjoin 19. All right, next up on the list is a fragrance from Miami. And of course, they threw some tobacco in there, and that is Tabac 28. Now, Tabac 28 is a bone-dry fragrance with, I would say, a lot of amber woods. There's a lot of different types of amber woods. This one in particular smells exactly like the amber woods you would find in Gucci Guilty Absolute. That kind of, that band-aid industrial 3M material kind of um, amber wood, right? And I get a lot of that, but you also get a lot of uh, leafy, dry tobacco leaves here. Mixing in with this uh, note of cognac or rum, I think it's rum. And the rum here comes off very resinous, like the, the stuff that you would find at the bottom of the uh, of the barrel. And the, the one thing that I really did like about this was the fact that there was a note of vanilla here, but this isn't like every other tobacco fragrance that relies heavily on vanilla and you get no tobacco. I don't really get much vanilla here, maybe a little bit. There's definitely a little bit of sweetness here, but it's all the way in the background. A lot of woodiness definitely probably a lot of isoe super here kind of musky but overall uh very nice and leathery too as well kind of like this vintage brown leather seat like you're in a cigar lounge tabak 28 
Next up on the list is number four. Now this one I really, really like. This one has a huge, huge dose of bourbon uh, black pepper. Poiv 23. Just grind up some pepper, a whole bunch of it. And mix it in with a note of amber. Oh man, this is really, really nice. Although benzoin kind of relies more on the benzoin, I think this amber relies more on the vanilla. And the vanilla here comes off a little bit like the one in Vani 44, but I would say the vanilla is a little bit less and there's definitely a lot more woodiness here. So very spicy, leathery, ambery, sweet, uh, balsamic, although it's kind of the same thing. Um, but that, the, 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 the black pepper here note is just so realistic, so nice, and I, I really do uh, like this one. I do like it. Very similar to Benjoin, so I would say if you're looking at both of them, that you, they're, I would say they're both redundant. I would say try them each and see which one you like more. Another thing, there's definitely, again, that muskiness, that embroxin, that isoe super mix here in the base. Poiv 23. Next up is a Dubai exclusive, and that is Queer 28. Now, although it's Dubai, there is no oud in here, if I'm not mistaken. And thank God they rely on the note of leather here. And this basically, the way to describe this is you're barbecuing while eating pork rinds. <laughs> this is what this smells like and it's definitely a little dirty there's there's some animalic touches here i would say it's definitely kind of a little a little pissy almost like ammonia like but it, it's very very little to the point that it, it kind of intrigues you it's 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 very nice it's very smoky dirty leather here and uh that's why i like it because honestly it's very unique i don't really smell uh, I've never smelled a, le a leather like this before, so uh, yeah, I, I do enjoy this one. Queer 28. All right, next up on the list is number two. Now this one and number one, a little similar, and they're both of these, number one and number two, are similar to a fragrance that's in the regular line, and I'll explain what it is. And this one is Gaiac 10. This is a Tokyo exclusive. Mm -hmm. So this is a very nice, musky, woody, incense -y fragrance. Kind of what Lalabo is famous for, that, that, that nice little touch of incense mixing in with that muskiness, that ambroxan, uh, that woodiness. Again, that, that, that hamster cage wheel here. Although this is, it is it's very strong, but it doesn't, pr like it, it will last a long time, but it doesn't really project a lot. So this one, typically I do go a little bit heavy on the sprays, but I think this is something that you won't smell, but others will smell it around you. And this one is just a very nice, relaxing and enjoyable uh, fragrance from the brand Gaiac 10. And last but not least, I think this one is probably one of the most famous uh, or the, the best selling city exclusives i think it is because uh a lot of people used to talk about this los angeles musk 25 and i think they use a bunch of different musks here and personally uh, 1957 is my favorite musk fragrance this is number two personally this has a lot to do and heavily related to another 13. and so although that one is Isoe Super and Ambroxan. This one leans heavily on the musks and there's a bunch of different musks here. You got clean musks and you have dirty musks and they take turns coming out throughout the wearing, which is why I find this so appealing personally. And throughout it, obviously the whole wearing, you'll get that, that Isoe Super, that dry woodiness, almost kind of steam-like in, um, in the in the Ambroxan, the Ambroxan, that same Ambroxan that you would get in another 13. I would even say this is kind of related to Baccarat Rouge, right? If you take out that sweetness. But like I said, again, rel relying on the musk rather than the Ambroxan. And be careful spraying this one on 
because you can spray it on and you think you don't smell it, but trust me, people smell it. They will smell you from across the room, this stuff. And like this stuff, personally, if I ran out of all these bottles and I went back to purchase any of them, uh, this would be the first one that I would purchase. Again, Musk 25, uh, really enjoy this. I guess maybe you're not surprised by that, by the, the, the YouTube handle of mine and this fragrance but nonetheless this is really really nice musk fragrance i would definitely say it's something that you should experience and try uh, if you do have a lilabo store by you and uh or if you could just order a sample i know they're about like 15 dollars but you know 15 dollars is better than 500 dollars for this 100 ml and so yeah that is my Lilabo City exclusive collection. Let me know if you tried any of them, if you like any of them, or if you don't even like the brand. I know a lot of people don't like the brand and that's fine. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. Take care.